Hello guys, Prime Technophilia here, or Jared. Um, I know it's a strange name for a channel, but anyway, I don't really make too many videos. This is the first video I've uploaded for quite a while. Not a, not really motivated with the whole YouTube video thing, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to make this video because this printer is just pissing me off. So this is a Tronxy X um, Tronxy X five S A dash four hundred. And the Dash 400 just means that it's got a 400 millimeter size bed. And if I just lift this camera up, you can see that's the whole printer there. It's 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter, and, and the Z height is 400 millimeter, I think. Um, now, the normal one that people get is the 330 size bed, uh, but really the firmware doesn't matter between them all because you can change the configuration of the X, Y, and Z um, parameters with just a basic G-code config file that you just load through with the uh, SD card reader. So the firmware, it doesn't matter what firmware you have for as long as it's a, for an X5SA. And the problem is that it's not open source. And I did not know this, and I've been caught out by this before, in the, before I bought something. And uh, I got caught out again, so it's not open source. So what happens when you get a problem? Well, you're shit out of luck. You can try contacting Tronxy and seeing if they reply, but I got a reply the first few times, and I got the G code to update the size of the bed and that. But then after that, they, they decided that I just wasn't worth talking to because I told them, hey, you know, uh, this printer's got a problem now, it's, uh, which I'm going to describe in this video. Now, you may see here that I've got two filament sensors, and that's because I'm testing both ports on the controller at the same time, because my problem originally was that it, when I tried to print, even when I had filament fed through the sensors, it would um, complain and say, hey, there's no filament, it's exhausted. You know, put some filament in and try again. Okay. I must have the uh, cable plugged in the wrong port because there's two filament sensor ports on the back. They're the only ports that are available. And if I reach over here and try to grab this manual, here they are here. I don't know if you can see it. Can it focus? Anyway, they're there just next to my thumbs. See, there's one there, one there. And they're called F end stops, filament end stop sensors, basically. And uh, what they're meant to do is when filament runs out, it's meant to make a beeping noise. Now, I'm not sure if it's meant to pause the print or not. I didn't think it was. I thought it just made an alarm noise. But maybe it's meant to pause the print as well. But that is not what happens on my printer. And I am going to show you what happens. And just for the, um, just pointing it out, these are actually my own sensors. But they're the same thing as the one that was provided. And I've checked the wiring. The wiring is straight through. There's nothing wrong. It's going to the two ports at the back. I've tried the bottom port by itself. I've tried the top port by itself. And what I'm going to do is just try the bottom port by itself. I'm just going to put one in just to eliminate any sort of argument that you can't plug two in at a time, but which is nonsense because this printer actually supports two print heads this is a single one so you know whatever anyway so i've got one there plugged in this other one's not plugged in but i'm going to show you something very interesting and i think this is this printer is wired in wrong in the firmware so we've got it turned on right that's great it turns on and i'll show you what firmware is on here well I'll actually tell you because you probably can't see it we go here system about, I think it is, version 1.4.1 RC13M4. So that's the firmware that's on there. Got a bit of cat fluff there. And you'll see that it pretty much works. The X and Y axis works, the uh, sensor heats up, um, the heat bed has been modified with a relay switch so I can pump more power to it so it actually gets up above. 100, 100 degrees. I think it max it went maxed out at 108, but it could probably go higher if I left it for longer. But uh, that took like um, about eight minutes to get to 108. So 
uh, the problem that I'm having here, this is the first problem. Watch what happens. Here's our sensor. This is not how they're meant to work. Oh, it turns the printer off. You take the filament out. Oh, printer's on. Printer's off. Printer's on. This is not how these filament sensors are meant to work. It's not meant to turn the printer on and off. So for some reason in the firmware, they've connected those ports up to standby on and off. So that's the mistake. That's one of the first mistakes. Okay, so what's the other mistake? Well, the other mistake is quite simple. And I'm just going to get rid of this a little bit of filament on the end there because I just want to show it. It's probably going to bump into the bed when it tries to uh, sense. I need to stand up. There's a bit of a mess here because I'm actually, that's just the way I am when I'm sorting out a new printer or something. I'm, I've got all my tools out and I put them away once I'm confident that it works. Anyway, when I received this printer, it didn't actually have any, um, it didn't have the, what do you call it, the nylon tubing inside the throat. So this is tubing and normally it has like three centimeters or whatever, 34 millimeters maybe inside the throat, uh, the neck, the filament neck that connects to the block. It had none. So I did not realize that at the start. So I had to pull that apart and fix that up. So it's in there now and that's fine. Okay, so we've got problem number one. This turns off the printer instead of just making a beep when it runs out of filament. And if you look down there, you, well, here actually, you see there's a green light there. So, well, it's getting, it is actually working, but it's just connected to the wrong thing. So if I go here, print, let's print the test print, little box. Okay, so it's going to heat the bed up to 45 degrees and then it's going to heat the hot end. Now, I suppose I should point out one other problem with this printer that I've encountered and that is the fan here and I'll try to get the camera on there. You see that fan? When that's going full power, which it does whenever you've got the hot end heating up, it actually cools the block significantly not a tiny bit it really cools the block down by 50 degrees at least and to fix that you neither need a silicon sock around here or a whole crap load of tin foil stuff unfortunately i haven't got this on there at the moment because i have redid the the printhead after realizing the throat had no no nylon uh, thread in it so that's a problem that's a big problem how did that get past their design phase? Who knows? I mean, I'll show you in a, in a tick if I can get this tripod to behave. I'll show you what happens when I put my finger on it. And I'm going to get this really close to the screen. Otherwise, you're just not going to see the temperatures. Now, I don't know if you can see the temperatures there. But this fan is now going full on. Now, if I stop that fan from spinning, well, let's get let it go up to 100 and whatever it tries to get to. If you see that temperature right there in the middle start dropping, that's bad. It should not drop unless it's being cooled. So it's meant to go up to 195. You'll, you'll find out and tick that it's probably going to struggle. Uh-oh, 188. 188, 187, oh no, it should never go down, not at that temperature. So I'm going to put my finger on the fan now, let's watch it go up. Fan stopped. Let's watch that temperature right there. The fan is not spinning. Not blowing on the hot end. Boom. Look at it climb, look at the baby climb, she's getting right up there. This is problem number three, or problem number two, it doesn't matter. So that, that problem we had there was the temperature would go down with that fan spinning. So you have to put a shield around it to stop the air from cooling the hot block, the hot end, the block for the hot end. 
Problem number three. Filament is exhausted. Oh, that's a pain. But there's no way to fix that. You can't just press yes and then mess with things. This gives you the time to extrude, you know, to extrude some stuff out and whatnot, but it's not, it's not going to work. Because you go back here and you press play, it tries to heat up again, which I'll have to put my finger on the fan because it won't heat up because it's cooling the block. And it'll do this again. Now some of you might be thinking, um, well, why don't you try the other port? I've already tried the other port. I've already, t I said that before at the start of the video, I've tried both ports. It will always come up with the saying, filament is exhausted. Doesn't matter which one I plug it into, it says the same. And the wiring is straight through, there's no wiring problems. So, the printer does not work. Why? I'll tell you what the problem is, probably, is whoever made this firmware, hey, let's turn the printer off, because this is exactly how filament Filament feeders are meant to work. Filament sensors are meant to work, right? You pull it out, and the whole printer just turns itself off. No, that's not how they freaking work. That is not normal. So what's happened? Whoever made this firmware for this printer has made a critical mistake and has put the wiring for the filament sensor uh, to the standby sensor, to the standby switch, basically. Both of them. And, and uh, the filament, the actual filament sensor ports or, or points on the chip that it's meant to go to, it's not connecting to the right place because it's all done by firmware. If you if you tell the firmware the chip to connect to to use these pins for for uh, the port, but you give it the wrong pin numbers, it will not work. It will do exactly what it's doing, which is to keep telling me that. The filament is exhausted because there is no pins on here to connect it to because they're the wrong ones. And I know that none, none of the other ports are actually working for that because they're working fine as end stops for the X, Y, and Z. There's no problems there. So clearly they haven't defined the ports, the pins, the pinouts for the actual filament sensor or they've defined them wrong on the firmware. I, I dribble on a fair bit, but I get to the point in the end. So this is where I am with this printer. Unusable. It would be usable if I could get access to the firmware and just configure it myself. But yeah. And you might ask, well, why not just put an open source Marlin firmware on here? Well, I could do that, except I don't think a Marlin supports this LCD screen at the moment. It's a very nice LCD screen. It's a touch screen. So I want to keep that. And um, if the controller board works fine, then I'll keep that as well. Uh, there are some people that have had problems with the controller board and have had to replace it. Hopefully that's not me. But I'll never find out until I can get an updated firmware that has the pin assignment correctly assigned for the uh, filament sensor. Now, there, there might be a command I can pass to the printer uh, in the G-code that disables the uh, filament sensor. So that's the next thing I was going to try sometime. But... It's, that's stupid. Why should I have to do that? Why can't they just make the firmware properly? Anyway, this video is going up on YouTube and I'm going to give it to Tronxy and say, hey guys, you know, I tried to get your help from you guys and you just uh, turn me down. So, you know, you enjoy the bad feedback. Obviously you do. So here you are. Anyway, see you later.